the main floor be used as a fitness center. Upstairs, there would be a relaxation area and... Oh, shit. <laughs> Ralph Klein wasn't much of a politician. He was more of an everyday man. When he became mayor of Calgary, he held his victory party in a small local bar, where he spent a lot of his time. When asked about his surge in crime in Calgary, he blamed it on eastern creeks flooding from Atlantic Canada. Any person with an honest desire to work and an honest desire to make a contribution to a community is welcome, but people who come to rob banks, mug senior citizens, and snatch purses are not welcome. Klein believed a lot of what the average Albertan believed and represented a grassroots populist character that wasn't manufactured. Klein was by no means a social elite. He dropped out of college due to a lack of money and joined the Canadian Reserve. He earned a degree from distance education at the Basque University, albeit he did plagiarize his papers. As Calgary mayor, he presided over the first Olympics in world history to post a profit. The infrastructure built from this event still generate profits today. Ralph Klein was not a party loyalist like Don Getty was. Klein had supported the Liberal Party in Alberta, the PC Party of Brian Mulroney, and was now applying for the Alberta PC Party. Before Klein showed up, it was suggested that the Liberals may take power back. They had recruited Edmonton Mayor Lawrence Decore as a leader, and he was winning support in the province's capital. The mayor of Calgary narrowly defeated the mayor of Edmonton in 1993. A new form of branding began under Klein known as the Alberta Advantage. The plan was to balance the budget at all costs. But in 1993, the federal Liberals came to power and began the deepest provincial funding cuts seen in Canadian history. This meant that in order for Klein to balance the budget, he would have to literally demolish hospitals, literally fire people, and literally make cuts to social programs and arts and funding, which he literally did. Part of Klein's plan was to create an investment paradise in Alberta. He would raid the Heritage Fund in order to give interest-free loans to corporations looking to set up shop. He offered a 1% royalty rate to corporates giving new development until the development cost was paid off, where it would rise to 25%. People bought it. After every election, more and more seats were secured by Klein's PC party. Whereas people might have blamed previous deficits on the PC party, people were blaming the lack of funding on the federal liberals. Klein was even able to get unions to agree to a price decrease. 2000 was his greatest victory, forming the largest majority in Alberta history. This was largely due, in part, to a concept called prosperity certificates. Ralph Klein promised that once the budget was balanced, he would pay people out what he considered to be an over-collection of taxes, also known as Ralph Bucks. This contrasted greatly from the vision of Lawhood, who wanted to keep it for future investments, and was more in line with the Social Credit Party had done in the past. If Klein would have left in 2000, his legacy would be the premier who led Alberta through the dark times and made the hard decisions that had to be made. But his continued legacy as one of the longest sitting premiers was about to get tarnished. By 2000, Alberta was now booming and it was all thanks to King Ralph. In 2001, he was heavily intoxicated at an Edmonton bar. In his own words, he wanted to meet some of the people of Edmonton and stumbled to a downtown homeless shelter. The homeless people began begging for money, not knowing who he was. He began berating them for being unemployed, and while walking away, began throwing handfuls of pennies at them. What other premier would be walking around with pockets full of pennies? Klein came forward and admitted he had a problem with alcohol, but would never admit to being an alcoholic. In 2004, he said this would be his last term as premier. Klein would lose nine seats in the 2004 election and step down in 2006. On his deathbed, it would be revealed that Ralph Klein suffered from dementia for most of his time as premier. A madman had been running Alberta. Now, Belinda roasted me as a conservative, but of course now she's a liberal. And I wasn't surprised she crossed over. I don't think she uh, ever did have a conservative bone in her body. Well, except for one. <laughs> well, uh, 
speaking of Peter McKay, um, I hope so. Bye. Replacing him was Ed Stelmeck, who earned the nickname Steady Eddie for his lack of a new vision. He wanted to keep things as they were and only make modest changes. The Honorable the Speaker. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Speaker, uh, as one that has grown various crops in this province of Alberta, we do depend on the good Lord to give us a sprinkle from time to time to grow our crops. I mean, without rain, we don't have any crops.